this morning I'd like to start off with our opening reading, so please join me in God's show. The unhindered light harbors purity, joy, and wisdom. Its perjurious working surpasses conceptual understanding as it benefits through benefits throughout the ten quarters of the ten quarters. Namo mi Butsu. 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 This morning's Sutra Channel will begin with Samu Jo on page 24, followed by Jusei Gay on page 3. Could you put the microphone? Yes. Thank you. 
the threefold refuge. Difficult is it to receive a human form, now we are living it. Difficult is it to hear the Dharma of the Buddha, now we hear it. Do not cross over to the truth of the present life, and what life shall we cross over? Thus, with sincerity and true reverence, take refuge in the three treasures of the truth. I take refuge in the Buddha. May we, together with all sentient beings, awaken to the great way of enlightenment and to the unsurpassed intent of Amida Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. May we, together with all sentient beings, enter the storehouse of the Dharma, becoming like the wisdom ocean. I take refuge in the Sangha. May we, together with all sentient beings, become units in true accord and harmony with all things. The peerless, profound, and wondrous Dharma is rare to encounter, even in many hundreds and thousands of kalpas. Now we are here to hear and receive it. Let us thoroughly understand the true meaning of the Dharma teaching. Namo Mi Butsu. Namo Mi Dabutsu. Namo Mi Butsu. Namo Mi Dabutsu. Namo Mi Butsu. Namo Mi Dabutsu. Thank you. Once again, please do me a The mind is like a venomous snake or scorpion, and each of us, in outward bearing, makes a show of being wise, good, and dedicated. But so great are our greed, anger, perversity, and deceit that we are filled with all forms of malice and kind. Now, I'm on me to book soon. Now, I'm on me to soon. So once again, good morning, everyone. So uh, a little bit about myself. A couple of things that I'm into is uh, photography and gaming, like PC gaming, uh, also Nintendo Switch and stuff like that. But a, a lot of photography. So for my birthday, one of the things that I had wanted was uh, a new monitor for uh, something that would have more colors and more vibrancy. You know, to all my to all my photos, so I can see it. So my wife was awesome, and she helped me find this really beautiful monitor. That so I went from having this little itty bitty thing on my laptop that had like no color on it to this huge 27 inch monitor that was just like in your face, full of colors and everything. And it it was just awesome. So I thought, wow, you know, I got this beautiful monitor and. Maybe it would be cool if I could just have one more monitor. Maybe I could just have three monitors. How awesome would that be to have one monitor here, another monitor here, and another monitor here? I mean, I could just like take on the whole entire world if I was playing a video game or something. So keeping that in mind, I'm now going to tell you two stories. Now, these stories may sound familiar from when we were kids, but please bear with me. So once upon a time, there lived a stray dog in a small town. One day, the dog got a juicy bone from the, from the butcher shop. All excited, he picked it up and looked for a secluded, a secluded place to enjoy it at ease. He ran to a nearby river to enjoy the bone all by himself. As he was chewing the bone, he happened to look down into the river. The dog was quite surprised as he saw his own reflection in the river. The dog and the bone. He mistook it for another dog with a juicy bone in its mouth. So this greedy dog uh, wanted to snatch that bone also. He was like, oh, look at that bone. I really want that bone. My bone looks good, but, but that bone is bigger. Because the reflection of the water was making the bone just get bigger and bigger. So the dog was like, I, I need more. I want more. So he opened his mouth to bark at his own reflection, hoping to scare the other dog away so that he could get the bone too. But alas, the bone fell down from his mouth into the river with a splash. The dog lost his piece of bone because of his greed and had to go away hungry. So, I'm sure most of you remember that story. If not, there's something new. So, story number two. Once upon a time, there lived a cloth merchant in a village with his wife and two children. They were indeed quite well off. Reason being was, they had a beautiful hand laid an egg every day. It was not an ordinary egg, rather a golden egg. But the man was not satisfied with what he used to get daily. 
he was a get get rich trice kind of person. So he always wanted his, he always wanted his money like right then and there. I don't want to wait. I need more money. The man wanted to get all the golden eggs from his hand at one single go. So one day he thought hard and at last clicked upon a plan. He decided to kill the hen, cut it open, and get all the eggs all together. So the next day when the hen laid a golden egg, the man caught hold of it, took a sharp knife, chopped off its neck, and cut its body open. There was nothing but blood all around and no trace of the egg. So here's the man, he's looking for more eggs, and then he realizes, I think it's a mistake. He was highly grieved now, because now he would not even get one single egg. His life was going on smoothly with one egg a day now, with one egg a day, but now he himself made his life miserable. The outcome of his greed was that he started becoming poorer and poorer day by day and ultimately became a pauper. How jinxed and how much foolish he was. So like I said, these stories probably sound familiar. I remember uh, the stray dog one was like when I was a kid, and I know the second one was kind of violent, but it also shows um, pretty much the same moral of the story. And that is, one who desires more loses all. One should remain satisfied with, one, with what one gets. And in Buddhism, we learned a lot about that. So we as human beings, we always want more. More, more, more. I want this. I want that. There's nobody in this room or out there and, you know, watching the live stream that does not have some want or some desire in this world. So I'll give you a couple of examples of me. So me being diabetic, I am not really supposed to be eating sugar. So instead I go out and I get, they're pretty good, like sugar-free candies, you know, chocolate covered peanuts, those things are just amazing. However, I want Mayo yogurt. I, I know you guys have a Mayo yogurt here in Salinas. We have one in Seaside, and that place is absolutely amazing. Um, you can fill it. So if you don't know what Mayo is, you go in, you get a cup any size you want. And I never got the small cups. I always got like the really, really, really big cups. And then what I would do is I would come in and I would go to the cookie dough. Like you have all these different flavors of different things, you know, different chocolates, gummy bears, you name it, they have it. I would always take the uh, cookie dough and I would just scoop and scoop and scoop it in there. I'll lay out a whole bottom. Then I go over to the ice cream, not sugar free, and I would just go ahead and press down the lever, just build up that all that ice cream on top. Then I would go back over, chocolate cookie dough, scoop, just start filling it up some more. And then I go back over and get some more ice cream. And just start building this huge monstrosity of a yogurt. Now, I am sure the intake for that was probably like three or four days worth of sugar, and here I am, you know, not even supposed to be having any of that. But I know, so right now, now that I know that I'm diabetic, I, I know that if I give into it, I will get way too much, like I was saying, um, and I shouldn't have it in the first place. I would just cause damage to myself because my, you know, my sugar numbers would go up and I could cause damage to myself. Another thing is, like I was saying earlier, I want a second monitor for my computer system. If I give in, there goes money that can go towards my schooling books. So right now I'm actually trying to get my degree, and as we all know, school is not cheap. So if I was to get this monitor, which I start looking I'm like, oh, that'd be so cool to have another monitor, like I was saying, you know, I could, you know, have do more with my gaming and I could do this and have YouTube videos playing over here while I'm focusing on my photography here and all these other things, but in reality, how much can I really afford? Those things are not cheap. My wife was awesome enough to save up the money for me to get in the first place. So if I went ahead and did that, well, now if I went ahead and used my money, there goes my money for schooling. Because books, as we know, they're not cheap. Now I'm going to cause myself stress by running around trying to figure out, okay, I'm going to have to go find a used book or a loaner book or something, and it just causes just complete chaos over my greed of wanting something that, in all reality, I really don't need. So if I was to do either one of these, then not only do I cause myself suffering, but I also could impact my loved ones. My health could get worse and my wife, my wife, if I, if I was to continue to eat the Mayo yogurt or eat the junk food or whatever that I'm not supposed to be having, now my wife might have to care, take on caring for me in my unhealthy condition because of my greed. 
If I don't have money for school, knowing my wife, she would give up something, which she always does for me and my daughter, to ensure that I get what I would need for school. All because of me trying to sneak out and possibly buying, you know, something that I don't need. So how fair is that actually? So in the Four Noble Truths, we know that the second truth discusses the truth of the cause of suffering. In the book, Jodo Shikshu Agai, under the chapter of the teachings of the Buddha, it reads, The basic cause of our suffering, Shakyamuni Buddha taught, is our bono, our base passions or worldly desires. Bono is often referred to as blind passions. They are called blind because although we may often see these passions in others, in, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, here. Although we may often see these passions in others and may think that we understand them, more often, than, more often than now, we fail to see them in ourselves. So we're always doing the same thing. We're, we're, we hear other people want these things, and it's like a good example, like at my school, I work at a middle school, and I was hearing the kids talking about, oh man, you know, I, I want to get these Nikes, they cost about three four dollars, or I want to get, uh, believe it or not, Crocs. Crocs are like huge right now, I want to pay a couple hundred dollars for them. And I hear all these different things about shoes, and me, I'm like, wow, what a waste of money. What a waste of money. Why are they even messing with this stuff? That's just crazy. It's a waste of money. You know, I don't even know why they bother. Then what do I do during lunch? I go hang out in my car or the teacher's lounge, open up my phone, and I start, I jump online, start looking at computer stuff, photography gear, or games for my Nintendo Switch. Stuff that I don't even need. So I, I become a hypocrite. So if you're part of this, you know, giving them grief about, you know, their passions and stuff that they want that they don't need, and I did ended up turning around doing the same thing. And then to top it off too, I might just buy, I can't even afford it, but then if I was to get it, that's just stuff that I'm gonna sneak onto my credit card, and it just causes more chaos and more problems. And we're all guilty of it. So we just have to remember, we can't have everything in this world. We need to remember how lucky we are to have the things we have. There are other things in this, there are others in this world who suffer because their wants are just the basic things in life, such as shelter, food, or water. Some just want a friend, and some just want family. Things in this world are just that, things. Be grateful for what and who you have. There's nothing wrong, now I don't want everyone to sit there and think that, you know, we can't want these things. There's nothing wrong with that. I still want a 59 Chevy El Camino, red, you know, brandy wine, lower, the whole nine yards, but to, to what extremes are we gonna, what I go through to get? It's a matter of saving, it's a matter of not letting it overwhelm our lives. So that's what makes life fun, is the pathways that we can earn and play with. The problem is, is it's how far we go or how much it drives us crazy to not have it. And that is what causes our suffering. Please join me in the show. Nirvana is called extinction of passions, the uncreated peaceful happiness, eternal bliss, true reality, it fills the hearts and minds of all beings. Namo Amidutsu. Namo Amidutsu. Namo Amidutsu. Namo Amidutsu. Namo Amidutsu. Now if you turn to page 220 and join me in the Gatha on Dosan 2.
Do we have any announcements? No. no? Okay. Please join me in the closing reading. For Jin Jin, indestructible as diamond, becomes settled, Amita grasps and protects us with compassionate light so that we part forever from birth and death. This concludes today's service. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you for being here. Um, it was a pleasure to be here at Salinas, and I hope you have an amazing day. And